Right. Oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's, it's all right. <laughs> it's fine. So we asked to come in front of the church to share God's word. So I feel so honored, so blessed to be given this opportunity. I mean, I'm from an academic background, so I've been teaching for about 10 years now. So I've had lectures with um, students in a lecture theater of 300 sometimes. I never felt nervous because it was my job. But to be honest, right now I'm petrified, <laughs> you know. But I know that the Lord will do his work and he will use me. So, you know, just, you know, work with me. And this is my first time and I'm just so grateful to the Lord and to the church to be able to stand here and share his word. So the words today that we're looking at is from, like um, Ben said, it's the parables. And um, Jesus was asking his disciples to be salt and light. And we are his disciples, so he's asking all of us as his disciples to be salt and light. So that's what we're looking at today. What does it mean to be salt and light? And I said through Jesus, because we can only be salt and light through Jesus if Jesus is in us. So that's why I've made that very clear that we are going to be salt and light. We've been asked to be salt and light through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So why salt and light? Why did um, Jesus used this sort of metaphor um, for his disciples. It's because at, at the time of Jesus, salt was really important. It was used as a preservative to preserve food, such as meat, for instance. Also seasoning, a flavor enhancer. It was used to, you know, enhance the flavor of food, to make food taste good. Um, so that's why Jesus was using this metaphor, so that his disciples can really, truly understand what he's asking of them, what he wants us to be. Also, the light, in the same way, you know, to be light. I mean, it's, light cannot um, hide in darkness. And today, we talked about that already, that when there is light, darkness will flee, as it were. So Jesus is also asking us, as his disciples, to be light, and he used the metaphor of light because if we are light, any darkness will flee. And so that's why Jesus used those parables. So you are to be salt of the earth, so stay salty. You are to be light of the world, so, so let it shine. So we'll go back more into that sort of um, Bible verse from Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16. He says, You are the salt of the earth, but if a salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. So God is saying that we are, you are the salt of the earth. So we are the ones who are going to be the ones to pro provide the preservative the, the enhancer, the, food, the seasoning. We are the ones who are going to show people that they should taste the Lord and the Lord is good, as it were. Yeah, the Lord is so powerful that is in us and through us we can now be salt. And to be salt, it means that God's going to use us to help heal the sick, to help the poor, to help those who are mourning, who are suffering from all kinds of issues, God wants to use us to chase away the evil that's in the world. We're going to be the salt. So when we're in this world and we see all the things going on around us, if a Christian is in that environment, we will be that shining light, that salt to heal. So if you've got someone in your workplace, in your classroom, at university or in school, or, you know, your neighbor, we're supposed to be the salt to them. We're supposed to be the ones that bring in that good news of God's word, to bring in healing, to bring love, to bring peace to their lives. That's what we're being asked to be. So the question is, how are we, how I, am I being salt? And I want to ask all of us in this room, from the youngest to the oldest, how are we being salt of the earth? And I want us to reflect about and think about it, say, what can we do to bring peace and to be the peacemakers 
that we've heard, you know, Jesus asking us to be. How can we show mercy? How can we show love? Because Jesus is love. God is love. I want us to start thinking about that as disciples of God, as Christians, to think about being salty. The next one is the light. And this is the verse, again, from that. You are the light of the world. A city set on a um, hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. How is your light shining? We've been told that we are the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the light and is in all of us. We were praying earlier on, you know, about the presence of God. We all felt the presence of God here. We're calling for the Spirit to come. And we saw the Holy Spirit here today as we worship Jesus. We saw that tangible presence of God. That Holy Spirit is in us. That light which is Jesus, is inside of us. And Jesus wants us to let that light shine in all those dark places, fear, anxiety, hatred, injustice, poverty. Jesus wants us, his disciples, to let that light that's in us shine. In our neighborhood, in the community, in the town, in the workplace, wherever we are, we've been asked to let the light shine. So how are you shining your light? I'm not saying that because it's as a way to, to judge. So are you not shining your light? Because all of us as disciples, sometimes we have challenges or fears or worries. So we need to be encouraged. And today I felt very encouraged when I heard Andrea talk and encourage us. When Sister Monique, Sister Lola talked to us during the worship, I was really encouraged and blessed. We are doing that for one another in the church. Let's carry on doing that, but we can let that light shine in the darkest places. Let's not be afraid to go and let this light shine wherever we are, in Blackpool, on the beach, <laughs> you know, wherever. This light should shine. That's what Jesus is saying we can do. So, so I want to encourage you and challenge you as well and to, again, reflect how are you letting your light shine. So, I said before, we can only do this through Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is the light. And in Romans 8:12, it says, again, therefore Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world, and he who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Again, I want to ask all of us, for some of us, we may be thinking that we do not know Jesus well enough or we're not close enough to Jesus. We feel distance or we might even be going through a, a, a wilderness. We're not sure about who Jesus is in our lives. Well, Jesus says he is the light of the world and only through Jesus that we can be the light of the world. So I want to encourage all of us today to look in our hearts and ask ourselves, do we know that we're saved? Have you accepted it? Because some people, even though they've given their lives to Jesus, they don't feel that they're saved. Sometimes I felt like that. Am I really saved? So do you know that you are saved? Have you accepted your salvation through Jesus Christ? Do you know that God wants you to see other people saved and he wants you to work with him? to see others saved as well. That's what we are if we're going to be the light of the world. God wants to use us to bless others and to be a light to others. And I, I want to use this chance to uh, show a testimony, um, you know, in terms of my situation. Like I said, I'm in academia, and in the last 11 years, I've been in a university setting. And in my previous job, I was there for about eight years. And I shared an office with another academic who was a Buddhist um, initially when we started to share the office together. And a lot of times we'd come into the office and she would tell me things about what she wasn't happy about. But I always made it clear to her that I was a Christian, that I believed in Jesus. 
So whenever she shared her challenges, sometimes it could be with other colleagues, sometimes it, with her husband. For instance, she said she didn't want to have any children. She didn't believe in it. Her career was more important, for instance, she said. I always shared with her how I looked at things from a Jesus perspective. I told her about my, the way I dealt with my challenges through Jesus. And a few times I actually sat with her and I said, you know what, I've listened a lot to what you, you're talking about. Can we pray? So we began to pray. So whenever she came into the office and she shared her challenges with me, I said, let's pray. A few times when we were praying, we had the professor come into the room and said, oh, what's going on? And left the room, you know, because he was kind of shocked to see these two academics praying. But that didn't stop us. And eventually she started the Alpha course. She did the Alpha course with her husband. She gave her life to Christ. And then she decided to become a mum. She became a mum at 43, <laughs> you know, because she then found value in her relationship. And she said to me once that she can see the difference as a Buddhist compared to being a Christian. She saw for the first time what love really meant when we talked about Jesus' love. It, finally, she understood that. She said her understanding of faith and religion was very dogmatic. It was karma. It was do it yourself. But through that witnessing, she found Jesus. Even this year in Thornton Cleveland, I'm here, she sent me a lovely card to remind me that Jesus Christ is risen. <laughs> you know? So why am I telling you this story? It's because I want all of us to be challenged to share our Christian stories with the most unlikely people. Tell people about Jesus. Tell people that Jesus is the light of the world. Because currently in this world that we're in, a lot of people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. And sometimes I'm kind of afraid, sometimes thinking, even now where I am at Cambridge University, I'm thinking some of these academics are so brainy and brilliant and intellectual. How could I even tell this professor who's world, world renowned that you need Jesus? <laughs> you know, I'm kind of sometimes scared to do that. But I know that if I told him that Jesus is the answer to the problems he's going through or whatever, that will be so much more powerful. And sometimes I'm a bit nervous, especially for the young people in the room right now, at your universities, in your um, school and colleges. There's a challenge. You're talking to one of your friends, and you know they need Jesus, and you want to tell them that. But that fear may be there. But I just want to encourage you that you can do it, because the Bible said, blessed are the persecuted. So even if you feel that you're going to be persecuted for telling people about Jesus, Please, let's not be afraid. Let's tell people that Jesus is the answer to whatever challenges we're all going through. And that's why I love what Sister Lola was saying earlier on, that Jesus will handle any issues that we're having. No problem is too big. You know, he can solve. Jesus is Lord to anxiety. Jesus is Lord to, to fear. To all the things that we are facing in society, Jesus is the light and the answer. And let's not be afraid to share that and to be the light for Jesus. So this is part of God's plan. God's plan to come down on earth as Jesus Christ, his son, so he can show us how to be salt, how to be light. That's part of God's plan. And in um, the book of Colossians 1, 27, it says, God wanted to make known among the Gentiles the glorious wealth of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is in all of us. God is challenging us that we have Christ in us, so therefore we can do all things. We can tell people about who Jesus is. We can show through action, but we can also tell. A lot of times, us as Christians, we do a lot of good deeds. We show people. You know, Christians Against Poverty is a great example of great social action. But we also need to start telling people about Jesus. And Christ is in us. God has told us. 
And you know, I was thinking when I read this passage about Christ in us, it made me feel bold. And it made me feel, uh, to just remind myself that, you know, we watch all the DC Marvel comics, all the superheroes, Superman, Wonder Man, all those huge superheroes, right? <laughs> all right, whatever they're called. <laughs> Is there Wonder Man? <laughs> Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah. And my husband and my kids, they talk a lot about those sort of superheroes all the time. And for me, I'm thinking, if Christ is in you, you are a superwoman, superman, you're a superhero. We are the living, not fictional comic characters, we are the living superheroes. That's how powerful we are, church, right? Christ is in us, so we've been equipped by Jesus as his followers, as his disciples, to go out and be salt and light. We've been challenged to go out to be salt and light to this world that needs salt and light. So we are the true superheroes. Not the DC comic characters, the Marvel Christ, Superman, Wonder Woman. We are the true superheroes. Let's believe that and take it with us to the world to do God's work. So this is not an option. If you're a, if you're a disciple of God, it's not an option. We've been challenged. We've been commissioned. We have to follow this challenge, obey, and ask God. That's why we should be hungering for God's presence in us all the time. And today we were praying and uh, you know, asking for the presence of God for a, you know, so that he can fill us up with his spirit so that we can go in obedience. Um, R.C. Sproul, it's a quote from R.C. Sproul, he's a theologian, and he says, Christ has commissioned us to be light and salt in this world. We have no option but to obey. We have to do this in obedience for Christ, and to remind you all, let's not be afraid. I challenge sometimes, like I said, and I'm sure all of us may be challenged in one way or another, but let's not be afraid to tell Jesus who Christ is for them. To tell people that Jesus is love and no problem is too hard. When we were talking and praying, I was thinking, every knee must bow. Every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord over everything that I'm going through, you're going through, no matter how small or how big. And those things must bow to the name of Jesus. And so when we're talking to somebody in the community, a friend, a family member, remember that. You're talking to your best friend, your mate in school. Whatever situation they're going through, that situation will bow at the name of Jesus. Yeah, and just use that power that you have, that superpower you have, Christ in you, to do that. So that's my message. So what I want to do is to challenge, but God is challenging us for us to perhaps, you know, go to the person next to you, share maybe the challenges that you may be having and you want a prayer for. It could be, I was saying, do you know Jesus? It could be, do you believe you're saved, even though you've given your life to Christ, or maybe you feel distance from God at the moment, or maybe you don't feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, or you think, you know, life is just too hard. Can I ask us to maybe, the person next to you, share something you want to be prayed for, and pray for one another. Let's start being salt and light with each other. We can take it to our families, to our communities, to the world. So let's pray for each other for that. And remember that Christ is the light for us. Amen. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks. So we're going to do that. Thanks, Dee, so much. Right. The, um, Skip, Julie, Mum, Dad, if you want to come up, we're going to. They're going to um, s- s- sing worship song with us. But um, yeah. encourage you. Pray. Get, get into pairs or threes or fours. And just pray for one another. It was just, I love that story. D is it wasn't saying, I'm some sort of super evangelist. She just, she just made a friend at work. That's all she did, isn't it? That's all you did. You just made a friend. And so you can do that. We can do that. We can make friends. And as we make friends, we, we, we will get opportunities to say, this is who I am. 
I am different because Christ is in me. And so we are filled up, not to have a nice time. Actually, we're filled, if you read the book of Acts, we're filled up to be sent out. So let's pray for one another, another now that we'd be filled up to be sent out, to, that we would have opportunities this summer, over the next few weeks, to share the love of Jesus with someone. Some of us may see people saved, some of us may not, but we are still called to go. So let's pray for one another right now.